64% of Americans don't have a will or an estate plan. Do you? Well, if you need some help or advice, we've got the man for you here in studio. Joining me this morning is Fred Kreutzer of Kreutzer Financial Services. Good morning. Good morning. This is one of those topics people really don't like to talk about. They want to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be me. I don't need mm -mm. it yet. It's it's a procrastinate. If I was to say the number one thing people procrastinate is is getting a will, yeah. getting these documents in place because they feel like I don't need it, that they have a time when they know they're going to need it. Yeah. And we don't know when that is going to be. It's better to have these documents set up in advance from the time being a young family all the way to be a mature adult. Is having a will enough? No. A uh, will is basically really the cornerstone to the whole estate planning. Okay. A will is basically going to stipulate where you want your things to go who's going to be the executor of your will. Mm -hmm. Think about who that's going to be. The executor doesn't step in until you have died. So okay. it's an after effect. All right, so let's go over some of your estate planning 101 tips. Let's start with financial power of attorney. Probably the most important document, I believe, because we're husband and wife, a lot of times a wife might call me up and say, I need to know about my husband's account. Well, without having a financial power of attorney, she really has no rights to ask for anything wow. about her husband's accounts. Mm -hmm. Legally, we cannot give information. So let's assume your husband had a coma and he needs to get to monies in a 401k because you're in a financial disarray. Sure. They have absolutely no right to get to any of that money. That spouse cannot use that. They can't even ask and inquire about the account. So without financial power of attorney, we've given nobody the power to step on our behalf if something happens. Really important. But be careful who we name it to. Okay. Because <laughs> naming it to the wrong person could be a disaster. You're in big You're trouble. giving someone the ultimate power over your finances. All right, let's go over both health care power of attorney and living will. Health care power of attorney says who's going to step in? Who's going to make the decisions? Who's going to speak to doctors on my behalf to ask about what happens? A living will is basically saying, do I want to be resuscitated? So you're laying mm -hmm. out specifics, which all, we all want that call. We don't want someone else to make that decision. Sure. So we should make that a sound mind at this point in time. It's a lot to put on someone else too. It is. It really is. All right. Is. What about guardian for children? This is the big thing. I talk to all my young clients in there and say, they, of course, we don't feel like we need a, a will because we're young. We're, we feel like we're invincible. We got the whole world yeah, ahead of us. We got time ahead <laughs> yeah. of us. But that thing is, what if we're in a car accident, something happens? Who do you want to raise your children? Sorry. We hear a lot of times people think, well, my godparents. Well, godparents means nothing legally. Yeah. That is, a, that is to raise your children through the church, but it has no legal bearings whatsoever. Good to know. Guardianship is huge. And make sure you ask the person ahead of time that they want that responsibility to raise your children. All right, we got to wrap things up. Fred, thanks so much. Thank Good you. information. We appreciate it. Get with it. He's